by their fruits. Grapes are not gathered from thorn bushes, nor figs from thistles, are they? So every good tree bears good fruit, but the bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit, nor can a good tree produce bad fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So then, you will know them by their fruits. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven will enter. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name cast out demons. And in your name perform many miracles. And I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. False teachers are described here as ravenous wolves. A wolf can hide in shepherd's clothing for a time, but his true nature will be discovered as he gets hungry. False teachers come to raid the sheep, seeking to pull away disciples after them. Every false teacher pours forth lies. Lies like pluralism, evolution, atheism. All lies that set, set the mind hostile against God. All, all things that are rebellious in nature. Evolution is a lie because it is manifest from the things that are made that God exists and that he has divine authority. You can look to the highest heaven and see the stars. The best telescopes of men cannot begin to count the number of stars. You can look to the microscopic level, to the DNA strand. DNA is not merely a random collocation of molecules. You can't just throw a bunch of amino acids in a, in a vat and get DNA. There's information on a, a strand of DNA. Take one of our signs. I can't reduce that to cardboard, ink, and tape, and throw it all back together and just hope, hope that it comes out as a sign. It, it's, it's got information. The information was put there by someone. So too is, is the information on your DNA strain. So it is, it is clear from the things that are made that God, God is, is, is evident to us. He's made himself known. His divine power and glory are manifest to us. And these false teachers seek to pull away sheep after them. You find them in your university classroom, propagating these myths of humanism, and evolution, and atheism. Why? Because if God doesn't exist, if we all come from nothing, then nothing matters because we're not going to be judged for what we do. That's an attractive idea. If God doesn't exist, then like Eve in the Garden of Eden, I could be like God. I could determine right and wrong for myself. If God does not exist, and there are no rules. There is no good. There is no bad. There just is. This is what science can demonstrate for us. Science can tell us what is. Science can't tell us what ought to be. And the sheep that these false teachers pull astray after them, they're not guiltless in this. Paul says to his protege, Timothy, the day will come when men will not endure sound teaching, but seeking to have their ears tickled. They will be led astray into cleverly devised myths. Wolves in shepherd's clothing prey on the sheep to grow their egos, to 
grow their bank accounts. No, that's not so much. No. To boost their credentials. The sheep follow after the false shepherd because they like what they hear. It's an attractive lie. Nobody, um, nobody goes unwillingly after a false shepherd. They like what they hear. They like the empty promises that will one day lead to death. Jesus, on the other hand, is described in the Gospel of John as the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep, he says. Jesus Christ didn't only lay down his life on the cross, he did do that. He laid down his life every single moment of his life for others. He loved his neighbors as he loved himself. He lived self-sacrificially. He didn't seek to gorge himself on the backs of his sheep. He lived a life of self-sacrificial service. Why did he do this? Because he loved the Lord his God with all his mind, with all his heart, with all his strength, with all his soul. These two commandments that summarize the entirety of the law, Jesus kept perfectly as he laid down his life for his sheep. And then, what was the end? Jesus was convicted, he was lynched in a kangaroo court by unrighteous men who poured out lies, false accusations. He was crucified on a Roman cross, had nails driven in his hands and his feet, crown of thorns, he was flogged until the, the back muscle tissue was hanging out of, out of his back. And that wasn't even the worst of it. As he was hanging there on the, on the cross, he had the full foaming cup of God's wrath poured out upon him. Why? 1 Peter 2.24 says, He bore our sins in his body. It says in, in Paul's letters to the Corinthians, He made him who knew no sin, who was perfectly righteous, to be sin, to be the atonement, to be the sacrifice, to pay the payment for, for our sins on our behalf. Our Jesus was crucified, dead, and buried, according to the scripture. And on the third day, he was resurrected. So that having been crucified and resurrected, we might die to sin and live to righteousness in God. Daily. 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 There will come a time when Christ will return. He has been appointed as the judge over all mankind. He is a righteous judge. Each one of us has broken God's law. Proverbs 6 says, there are six things the Lord hates, yea, seven that are an abomination to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that are swift to shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked schemes, feet that are quick to rush into evil. False witness who pours out lies against his neighbor. stirs up dissension among his brothers. We have all broken these laws. We are all liars by nature. And we deserve that condemnation that Jesus bore on the cross. And when the arresting officer, death, brings us before the judgment bar of God, we will all be guilty. I do not stand here to condemn you. The one who does not believe in Jesus Christ is condemned already. It is only by turning from your sins, by repentance, by turning from your sins, trusting in Jesus Christ alone, that you can be saved from that wrath, that just judgment of God. So I beseech you today, 
Do not be like the bad fruit who is cut up and thrown into the fire. Jesus says in Matthew 24 that those who do not do the will of his Father will be placed on his left and be told to depart to the eternal fire that is prepared for the devil and his angels. Don't go there. Turn around. Quit trusting in your dead deeds and your lifestyle of sin and those attractive lies that the false shepherds teach you. Turn instead and run to Christ. Trust in his finished work. It is the only way to escape the eternal punishment of God. Hell is not a Christless eternity. God will be present. His grace will be absent. And his eternal wrath will be poured out upon you. His face will be eternally set against you. Turn around. Run. If you're going towards a cliff, run in the opposite direction. Trust in Christ through repentance and faith. Believe on his name.